Inflammation is associated with chronic disease, and a new study just came out showing that foods that have a high glycemic index, carbohydrates, increase the risk of inflammation. That is a major breakthrough. It tells us how important our diet is and how important it is not to eat a lot of carbohydrates that are real sweet to turn to sugar fast and to glucose fast and raise the blood levels because that causes lots of changes that aren't healthy for us. It can like increase the risk of cancer mm -hmm. and diabetes, and cardiovascular disease. Just about any disease is associated with inflammation and this would add to it. So what we eat makes a huge difference. Foods that have a high glycemic index are the ones that turn into sugar quickly. Ones with a low glycemic index tend to do that over a longer time. So the ones that have a high glycemic index would be things like soda pop and sugar and white flour. Mm -hmm. Things that turn things to sugar like quickly. Sodas. <laughs> and things that have a lot of fiber in them tend to slow it down or things that have fat in it tend to slow down the absorption of whatever is in the stomach. So things that would have a gl low glycemic index would be things like whole grains and beans and lentils and even some fruits like grapefruit and pears. Those have a lower glycemic index than other fruits that uh, have more sugar in them. Exactly. Now one of the things that these investigators measured was a C-reactive protein which is a marker of inflammation. And what they found was is that the level of C-reactive protein in people who are overweight, that's what these, this study was done on people overweight or obese, rose about 22% when they were on this diet for about six months. So it's, it's important to know that. Another thing they noticed is that levels of adiponectin, which is another hormone, this one made by fat, that tends to uh, protect us against insulin resistance, which is what causes inflammation, tends to cause higher levels of sugar, tends to cause hypertension, and, and tends to make sugar turn into fat especially if we don't burn it quickly. Yeah, it regulates the metabolism of the sugar and the fat, right? In a much healthier way. So the adiponectin is, a, is an important part of this, and levels of adiponectin were increased by about 5%. So we're looking at a number that's pretty significant. Now this particular study was done on 80 people, and they had two 28-day feeding cycles with high and low glycemic index foods. And that's what, what turned the results that we were finding, what we were finding. So what we're discovering really is that not all carbohydrates are created equally. The simple carbohydrates are the ones that cause lots of problems for us and tend to turn to fat and tend to make our triglyceride levels high. So if we're going to want to have levels that are lower and not convert them into fat, which is another problem that happens, which goes to places where we don't want it, like the liver, which ultimately can even lead to cirrhosis, we have to eat carbohydrates that tend to rise at a slower level so the body can use them before they get turned into fat. I think something helpful to know is that if your carbohydrates are white, probably better stay away from them. That's really right. <laughs> if it looks like a food, a whole food, it looks like a pumpkin or a watermelon or a zucchini or a strawberry, it's going to be good for you. Nature made it that way. If it comes in a package, it's going to store well but it may not be a food that's really in your best interest to eat, particularly if you don't know what those ingredients are. So stay away from processed foods that are high in sugar. That's, ex that's the bottom line here, Vicki. So sweets incre increase inflammation, stay away from them, from them. If you're an athlete, you might get away with having a little bit more because you burn it as you go. But for those of us who are eating and then not getting active after we finish our meal, sweets can be devastating, ruin our metabolism and set the stage for inflammation and all the chronic diseases that we're seeing today.